Mindy, first of all, thank you so much for your time. I'm pretty sure this video is going to uh, make a change in many people's life. Get your pen and paper ready. This is, uh, yeah. this is not just going to be a fly by the seat of your pants kind of interview. Let's go. Yep. So uh, before we dive so much into JV partner uh, details, can you tell us a little bit about more, you know, more about yourself? Yeah. So my name is Mandy Brenham, married to my husband for 17 years. We have two children. I started out as administrative assistant in a dental office. Um, I got a job at the hospital and I was, you know, balancing two part-time jobs, being a part-time stay-at-home mom. Um, my husband, who was out in the con in the community working, creating our income, and we had the automotive crash. Uh, you and Windsor would certainly have yeah. felt that, and we felt it here too. And we thought we thought we had um, good outlook on our financial future. And then the, and then 2007, 2008 happened, and we realized that we really weren't in control of our financial future. Now I'd been somebody who had um, I came from a a normal household growing up. My parents are not divorced. We went to Disney. We always had food and shelter. Um, you know, so I didn't have a rags to riches, but there's this drive in me that always wanted more. And, um, and I remember going to conferences with the dental office and coming home and having all these great ideas. And then they would say, oh, we don't really want to change anything, Mandy. Everything's fine the way that it is. And so I wanted a way, I wanted an industry. I wanted a business that I knew that if I worked super hard, I would have the direct result of how hard I work. And so up on the radio comes this free two hour session with Scott McGilvery. And I had three friends calling me saying, you need to go to this. So we went to the event. I was the first one in the back of the room. I signed up for a big coaching program. And we went from at the time having three rental properties to having transacted uh, today, five years from joining that pro coaching program, we've transacted 75 properties in the last Ooh, five years. 75. So 75. That, that what it tells why you got the name JV Queen. Yes. That's why you need to write these things down. Yeah, I always so, say, you know, and see that um, my, my, when I talk, it's like you're uh, here, I've got a little snowball mic, but imagine this is like a snow globe. And you know, when you're in a snow globe and all the snow sits at the bottom, well, after this presentation, I'm going to shake up your brain a little bit and I'm going to give you a whole different way to be able to think about joint ventures, why they would happen, um, like, and why yeah. anybody can have one. I'm super excited, especially, you know, it's, it, it's not only for my audience, for me as well. I only have one JV partner, so okay. now I have to step up. That's so, it. you know, the basic question that always I get from my audience is, you know, how, where can I find JV partners? Okay, uh, let's go back one more, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Before you start to, before you can grasp why a JV partner would partner with you, you have to have something they want, okay? And so you have an in on the properties. You do property tours. You're showing people what to look for. So, you know, there were properties. So let's just say that property that we walked in with you, you have to have the person that you, if you're looking to attract a joint venture to come to the table, you need to have something that is attracting them. Yeah. Um, and so you need to become a real estate. You need to become, you need to have lots of education in the real estate world. Now I'm going to remove the word lots. Okay. I'm sorry. You need to start to educate yourself in the real, in the real estate industry. This can take $0 or we'll say very little amounts of dollars. You don't need to go to a big 10, 20, $40,000 coaching program. No, I'm talking about market research. I'm talking about going to the open houses. I'm talking about connecting with a great realtor. I'm talking about looking at comparable properties. I'm talking about going on property tours, talking to fellow investors, going to local investor groups. Um, Cause you have to start to, if you find this amazing asset and you're like, well now I need a JV partner. You, you need to know why this is an amazing asset that you can even offer to a JV partner. So the first thing is for you to build up some, some market jargon, like be able to say, Hey, do you want, I've got this great property that has a great ROI. And you know, somebody would say, what's ROI. And you would be like, well, 
that actually means return on investment. And so you have to be able to talk the talk to, to attract the financial partner. Now you could be super eager. So let's just say, I know on our property tour, there were some great contractors. They can talk the talk based on their contracting experience. They can be like, oh my gosh, I found this great property. I know what we can do with it to bring up the value. I'm a contractor. I do this all over the city. Okay, so you can see yourself as a contractor why you could attract partners into your business. Yeah, Here's another I one. I'm a real estate agent and oh my gosh, there was this property that just hopped online and I'm telling you it's the best price property in the entire city. Love it. That's what you can bring to a JV assets and I'm telling you this is one of the best properties that I manage I love it and um, and it's an offer opportunity for me to offer to you as the joint venture partner would you like to come in and own this property I already know how to manage it so you can kind of see that you are building your what I call your investor resume to be able to identify to a potential joint venture partner why you should be hired for the job or why they should partner with you. My, yeah. Is that a good place no, to start? I, I love that because, you know, you pretty much covered, I had a couple of questions that are really connected to that, but you answered everyone with, <laughs> with one whole story. But that, that's really important. You know, what, what you mentioned, uh, I, got, I got my first JV partner just, you know, the way, because now I understand things, you know, ROI and, learn you know make yourself educate first if yep. you don't know then you cannot find one yep but yep and and latch on to somebody i mean like i'm online there's lots of different people online latch on to start to say you know what is she doing and what is her terminology her verbiage yep. to be able to say if she can attract a partner how do i mimic and do what they did this is this in this industry of real estate you know i commonly say don't reinvent the wheel the wheel is working. There's people who are successful with properties, with portfolios, with raising capital, with joint ventures, with renovations, with flips, with, you know, all these things. Don't try and reinvent the wheel here. Yeah. There's already success, like follow success. Love it. Yeah, that's, that's so true. That, that's a cool thing with real estate. You don't have to be a super intelligent or anything. Just follow others' footprints. Yeah, the, I love it. Um, one other question that I really wanted to ask is, you know, um, even like I'm confused with, okay, how do I structure the splits? You know, yeah, how to structure the deal? You know, what does okay. you offer for the partner and what do you keep? Okay. So how do I structure joint venture deals? What is yeah. the, what are the variety of ways to structure joint venture yeah. deals? Disclaimer here, there is no right or wrong. Okay. Um, there are various ways to structure joint venture deals. At the end of the deal, you will either feel in fair exchange or you will feel out of fair exchange. Okay. And that is your internal dialogue telling you that it likes what you got into or it doesn't like what you got into. Don't do that again. Right. It's um, okay. So, um, my typical split is 50-50. I look for, from a joint venture financial partner, I look for them to qualify for the mortgage and put in all of the money. I'm going to clarify that. All of the money. Down payment, closing costs, and renovations. Okay? I am what I classify as, some people will say the working partner, but I classify myself as the, the real estate expert partner. Okay? I bring the real estate. I bring the vision for the real estate. I bring the project management and I see, I oversee the management of the asset. Okay. I do not do property management. Okay. So again, I'm talking to you today as Mandy today, 2019. Okay. I will go back to how I started, but so that's what my deals are. So I say, I have this great asset. This is what I need from you. Um, at the end of me doing my renovations, we will refinance. You get all of your capital back before I get any money. Okay. So if I'm asking my partner for 150,000, that would be like a, 
you know, a $50,000 down payment and a $100,000 rental, they get all of that $150,000 back before any equity is split. Now, I do split cash flow 50-50 just because everybody needs something to live off of. Okay, so that's your typical 50-50 JV split. Um, I, as I was starting out offering this 50-50 JV split, to sweeten the deal, I did do the property management for free, okay? Um, and so that was one of the aspects of me. As I grew, I realized that the value was not in me managing the toilets, it was me managing the manager that managed the toilets, okay? And, my, and I just explained that to my partners and they saw it, okay? Um, another way to go about this is um, you could still be 50-50 JV partners, but maybe you're a contractor and instead of what I just said there as a $100,000 renovation fund, maybe you as the contractor would say, I give you my contract rate. I still need to get paid as a contractor because that's my job. But instead of it being $100,000 to an external client, I'll give it to you for $80,000. So you're bringing value to your joint venture partner, but you're still getting paid as a contractor. I'm going to repeat that. You are not working for free. Yes. <laughs> okay? Okay, so you're not working for free. You are offering, you're offering value. If you were a, a property manager, maybe again, you offer the free property management another way to split the deal. And again, this is like, you know, a hundred ways to split the pie here, people. Um, you could do a 60, 40 split. They bring all the money, all the down payment capital, you bring the deal, but maybe you're offering them a 60, 40 split. Okay. That's not a bad way to go about it. Um, here's another one. Maybe they, you know, there are financial partners that make extreme amounts of money. So if you're connecting with a doctor or a lawyer who's making, you know, three to $500,000 a year, okay, um, this person is like, I don't want $400 a month cash flow. That just gets added onto my income and taxed at 50%. It's silly. So you could do a 70-30 split, okay, meaning that this person gets 70% of the equity at the end of, you know, we'll say a five-year joint venture term. And the working partner takes 30%, but you get all the cash flow. So it certainly helps this person here to be able to have a cash flow coming into their business. And it's a benefit to this person because they get a huge equity position at the end, um, but they haven't had to pay small little, they haven't had to lose it to taxes along the way. That's a great opportunity yeah. for somebody. That's a great way to look at it. Actually, I never even thought of, you know, they have to pay for taxes. If yep. they get the so gas. then let's on these notes, you can really tell. Um, and I think I did this at the, at the wind city meeting, but I would really like you to create a piece of paper on a wall, someplace that says, who is my ideal joint venture partner? Okay. And I want you to list their attributes. I want you to list who they are. I want you to really come to a clear idea of who it is you're attracting. Okay. Um, you know, so for me, it's uh, a lawyer who is super busy. Uh, so time is of the essence to him. He values experts in their own field. So he'll value me to come into it. He understands the, he understands diversification within his real estate portfolio. So he probably owns his own firm. He's been a lawyer for, you know, 15, 20 years. Um, he has a family. His children are probably off to university or, you know, within the process or, or have finished right now. He might be a grandfather. Um, and, um, and he makes three to $500,000 a year. His house is paid off. Um, that, so that's my idea of who it is. Uh, it could be male, could be female. Um, but, you know, a professional that way. So I want you to drill down who it is you're looking for. Because if you have this idea in your mind that, um, you know, oh my gosh, I need to ask somebody for $50,000 and I don't know where they would get it. Well, then I would tell you that your ideal JV partner or the, the, the vision of who you have could be somebody like you. If you're saying, well, where do I come up with the $50,000? You're reflecting that you're trying to find somebody who's the same as you. But yes. you need to have this vision of who you're attracting. 
So, you know, that just could, that could be the owner of a company, could be a dentist, could be, you know, um, a nurse, police officer. There's a lot lots of different people who have the qualities that it is you're looking for that would be ideal joint venture partners so don't get stuck on where would somebody come up with 150,000 you have to think who has 150,000 and how do I attract them to this deal that I have in front of me that's that's super cool I, you always blow my mind <laughs> it's simple stuff all of this guess how much that guess how how much that ideal joint venture exercise costs zero dollars yeah it might take you half an hour to an hour to really identify you know who it is you're looking for i would be like where do they live what kind of house are they in and really drill down who it is that you are uh, attracting when you bring a, a deal across um, and so it's also very interesting because so again for my ideal joint venture if I have that crappy duplex on the other side of town because it's a hundred thousand dollars my ideal joint venture partner is like uh, I can't drive my BMW up to that property I I'm not interested in that okay now when I have this ideal joint venture partner in my mind and I have this underperforming fourplex that comes along and it's this beautiful brick purpose built property but it's under mar it's under uh, managed and the tenants aren't paying what they could be paying and it needs renovation now that i can talk to this partner and he goes okay i like that neighborhood i like the look of that building and so you can attract the type of jv partner to the type of property that it is you're looking for yeah that's a great point um how did you find your first jv partner what was your you know experience around that okay uh so we're being totally truthful here i had three jv partners walk away from a deal okay. before the first one came up so what what does that mean to you all these people that say you know um who was it uh jk rowling that had like 12 people turn her down for her books 12 publishers turn her down before she got a yes I'm telling you, I had my experience. I talked to, I actually had three people like signed on the dotted line, walk away. Okay. Um, so I was right there. I saw it. I knew what they got scared of. I knew where I had went wrong. I knew where I had not created confidence in the deal. And so the, the first joint venture partner was somebody within my real estate network. So she, um, she lives in Toronto. She works uh, top of a big uh, bank uh, corporation. Um, and she knew she wanted real estate, knew she didn't have time, but she was looking for a female entrepreneur that would, you know, that she could connect with and learn and grow. So we went out for dinner and we we're just like two ladies talking, 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 talking. And then I was like, oh my gosh, like I have to go. I got to catch my train back to the, to back home. And I said, uh, but before I go, we really need to talk about this property. And she said, oh, oh, I'm in. I said, what do you mean you're in? <laughs> We've not even talked about the property. And she said, I'm in because if you're in, I know that I will be into the same property. So she bought me, okay, yeah. which is another really key tool here. You could go on about, well, the paint color is going to be, you know, charcoal gray and I'm going to do a white trim and I'm going to do this in the kitchen and this and this, and it's going to cost me this much. And you've lost the person because you're going too deep they're looking at you and they're saying do i like how she's dressed do i like how she talks about it do i feel her energy is this really like is my money going to be safe and um and those are the things that a jv partner is looking for i literally got goosebumps for this <laughs> it's, it's super true it, it applies for anything you do right like at the end people buy in to you love that it, it's yeah absolutely so what's your plans look for looks like for you know uh, future for 2020 yeah. so um i'm continuing to grow i love the joint venture partners that i'm helping so there's um there's super wealthy people that can buy 100 unit buildings and compete with pension funds but then there's this like uh, keep in mind my story. I was average and I had to remind myself why I wanted more because you know, you know, there's a story about the crabs and you know, there, uh, if crabs get trapped in a, in a trap, one crab will try to, to leave. He's like, look at, I found a hole. If we all just crawl out of this hole, we can come out for free. 
and the other crabs are pulling him back in and they're they're saying no don't go stay with the group stay with the group even though you know you're going to be you know doomed for death um but this crab so nobody's listening to the crab so at points in this real estate investing journey you're the crab that's found the hole and all your friends and family and whoever else, previous coworkers and stuff, they're like, no, come back down. We don't know what it's like out there. We can't support you. We, we can't give you guidance. You know, I had an uncle one time that said, Mandy, I worry for you a little bit. And I said, uncle, I worry for you. Like, not me. Don't worry about me. I got what I got figured out over here. I kind of worry about you because, you know, you guys have, you know, you're sitting on a pension plan. You haven't diversified outside, like, you know, they're just going to be okay. So I am trying to break away from average. And um, I forget where I was going with the question, but I really like the crab story. No, that, that, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that story. So, you know, what, what it looks like for 2020. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm continuing to break away from the crabs. And, um, um, and I'm bringing other people with me. I'm saying, I want to talk to average people who are like, they're just waking up. They're just yeah. kind of waking up in the matrix going, there's got to be more out there. You know, I'm 45 years old. I'm 55 years old. Retirement is there now. Like we're not in our twenties and thirties anymore. We're like there. And we're saying, how do I create a more secure financial future for myself? So I'm systemizing a lot of my stuff. So if I was able to, I think this year we've closed on 19 properties. It is the largest year that we've had. I want to be able to close on 190 properties next year. But so it's going to be a platform of systems. So I'll just be able to take in all these people. I'll be like, let's create a, a change in the financial future for you. And we're going to be able to um, handle more people into our, into our system. Yeah, that, that's, that's really awesome. I, I'm, I'm damn sure the the confidence that you have, you will make it happen. Well, and, uh, and that's, but that's not something else though. I want you to know I'm a normal freaking person. Like, you know, you say last week you weren't well. Um, I came home from a busy week a couple weeks ago and it was Friday night. And I was like, there was something, I could have done something on Saturday. I could have done something on Sunday, but I said no to an event and I said no to another event. And, and, and I actually, I fasted for 48 hours and I laid in bed and I read and I totally decompressed because I was just like, I ain't no machine here. And, you know, everybody needs some downtime and I've made so many mistakes. And I, if I get, if I send you an email at 3 a.m., it's because my brain is going tick, 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 tick. And I can't sleep. Well, when I don't sleep, I don't have good days. And so it's kind of like the compound effect. But um, so I'm just a normal person. But the difference between somebody is uh, like maybe myself and, and others is I kind of I might make a mistake, have a little bit of a failure and then go, OK, what did I learn from that? And pick myself up and go forward again yeah. and go forward again. That, that that's the right mindset right like I, I love it uh honestly i learned so much from the whole conversation we had so far i love to have more conversation but we are almost like you know running out of um, the time limit i have so what i'm gonna do is like people who are interested to you know either jv partner with you or you learn from you i'll, I'll leave all the details in the description so reach yeah. out to mindy uh pick her brain you know it's 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 awesome. It, it, it's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you having so me. Thank you so much. Yeah, I look forward to connecting with everybody. I'm happy to be able to hop on some quick discovery calls just to be able to get you over a little hump if you yeah. are struggling with something. One quick note though, if you have any questions, you know, leave in the comments below. I will make sure get the answers from Mindy. Not my answers, I'll get from her. So leave the comments below. Let me know what's, what's the pains you're going through. Thank you so Thanks much, Mindy. Thanks for Mimi. having me. Yeah, have a wonderful day.